Folks, Rich Bassini from RJBassini.com coming to you today to share a little information with you on some software and then go over a few other little things that I wanted to uh, bring to your attention. Nothing, nothing, you know, great, but just thought I'd share it with you. So I'm going to minimize the screen over here and take it from there. Over here, you see that there's software here, and this software here, I don't know if you guys have. Uh, you're using any type of spreadsheets to log in your eBay items. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you're, you're you're up on that stuff there. Some people may just do the old pen and paper type of thing. But if you don't, if you don't have a spreadsheet or you're thinking about getting spreadsheet software, this will give you have a little insight on saving a little money. Uh, you know me. I'm always trying to be frugal on things and watch and cut my costs and stuff like that whenever I have the opportunity. Well rather than buying the office 360 software I know it varies in price but I also have been seeing on eBay that the 2007 has been cheap uh, like $17 or whatever I've seen it ridiculous prices but the point I'm coming across is um, if you don't want to spend the money even now here's open office this is what I use uh, I got the 2016 You'll notice there's different prices here. $7.99, $6.99, $4.99, $19.99, $9.95. And the thing is, folks, this software you can get for free. Okay? So if you go type in Google and you type in Open Office Download, it'll bring you to this window here. When you get to this window, this is what you want. And it says go to download. When you go to the download, it'll tell you, you know, you get this information, the 4.1 release, blah, blah, blah. You can download a full installation for free, zero, nada. There's no hidden charge in it, no cost. Um, I've been using it. I haven't gotten any, you know, there's, like I said, there's, there's to my knowledge, I haven't gotten any, it's, it's totally free. Uh, I like it a lot. I, I think it's to me I think it's just as good as Office 360 I don't uh, I know a lot of people in the office environment you know corporate with the corporate world they use Excel PowerPoint and Word but this to me this is just as good I love it and I had it I already download on my computer I have it open over here a little icon to open it up you have basically the same thing their text document is word like word like here for example this is you gotta like translate it right there this is their word perfect this is their excel and this is their powerpoint you have drawing you also you can do a database and you got formula and plus you get templates what I like about it is we'll click the spreadsheet on the format if you look at the format it's almost the same thing if not it replicates excel just at some point you could do a lot of you could do a lot of things that you what you could do with Excel, you could do with this. I like the format, I like the way the windows are set up with your little icons here. You could change that look if you want. You can move around, you know, you could do a lot of things. You could wrap the text. There's a lot of it's got a lot of nice features to it. I love it. And I use this for my spreadsheet. Matter of fact, I'll show you what I have here for my spreadsheet. Okay, this is my spreadsheet. It's not finished, but as you can see, I put over here the date I purchased it, the description, the bought price, so on and so forth, and it goes, it then it calls the cost, profit, the um, sales tax, and so on and so forth, and demand, service, whatever. But this is what I use it for. Now, you guys, if you don't have a software package and you want to create a spreadsheet, you could graph it. You could do a lot of things. This this has the same features as far as I'm concerned. Just like it's got the same features like Excel. So what I'm trying to say is, save yourself money. If you don't have to, don't go out and buy it. I mean, you say, well, I can see, I can get, I can get Office, I can get Microsoft Office, the regular one for seventeen dollars. That's up to you. If you guys want to spend money on that, that's up to you. Me. You know me, guys. You know me. I'm always out to try to save a buck. 
and uh, I'm making this video when I make these type of videos I, I told you in, in prior videos uh, if I come up with any ideas or you know like any any money saving tips I'll be more than happy to share with you this is one of them I, I don't I don't know if you guys use a spreadsheet I don't know how you're logging your information in I have mine on a little book uh, a book a hard based book and I write down there when I go thrifting how much it costs. Like I said, just like I set that up, the date I bought it, the price, the selling, you know, what I sold it for, the profit, um, half off, 25% off. I put all that information. That's on my spreadsheet. Here, you could graph your stuff. Um, you could do a lot of things with it. It's 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 a really it's really a good a good application software package. I mean, and you're getting it for free. You, you got to look into it. And you know what? You could download on your computer. If you don't like it, delete it. Take it off. Uninstall it. You don't have to keep it. No one's saying you got to keep it, but dry it out. The uh, let's see what else they got here. I'm going to discard that because I'm going to do that. I'm going to open it again, and let's see what we get here. Now, this here, like I said, was their Excel. Let's see the text document. This is probably their uh, Word. This would be considered their Word. Nice little icons, clean little outlook on here. It's got. I love. I love it. I'll be honest with you, I love it. I, I'm really, I love the software package. I think it's a good software package, and um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it royally. I mean, I'm gonna use it for everything. Okay. Uh, let's see what else they got here. PowerPoint. If you're into doing a PowerPoint, let's say you want to do a well. Here's a database. All right, let's do the pre now their presentation. This is their, their presentation is their PowerPoint. You can see you got the empty presentation from template open existing presentation and you click on here and so on and so forth I don't, know, I don't think it's going to do anything okay then it tells you black and white you can tell you the blue border set up I guess you could start setting things up with it you know to get it to that format to where you want um, I plan on doing a PowerPoint uh, presentation well I call this PowerPoint uh, I'm going to do it where I'm going to do some slides with it maybe uh, give some pointers on, on certain things and uh, then I will upload it to uh, YouTube. Not right now. I mean, I won't do that just yet because that will take some time to do. Uh, I got to learn how to use this stuff too. Uh, I'm in a learning phase, just like you guys. If you know, if you get it, you're going to be in a learning phase too. You got the overhead sheet, paper, slide, screen, preview. It, it's great. I love it. I think you guys are going to like it too. Then you got a drawing program here. Uh, you could do drawing with it. You know, you could put shapes in there. I guess whatever. I guess you could put different shapes in there. I don't know. I guess you could see. And then this little window opens up here. You could change the color. Yeah, you, could, you 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 could do a lot of stuff with this thing. Yeah, you got to experiment with it. I think you you'll have a blast learning it. It's it's really nice. The other uh, thing is, let's see, discard. Let's see, cancel and I'll discard it. We'll we'll cancel it out. I guess. Whoop! I just bumped me out of there. Uh, let's see, what we got here. Now let's just close this out. Let's see, we'll open up another window. And then you got a database. Now, if you guys want to keep a database of your customers, that's what I'm thinking. I think I'm thinking of doing this here. Now, if you want to create a new one, I don't have a new one yet, but it'll tell you register for me, whatever, blah blah. Well, you can create tables with it, and then I guess you got to go in there. You got to register whatever um, the database would do us. But you know, you could do your own thing with this here. Like I said, you can create your own database. I'm not going to do it right now, but. Let's see here. Let's just see what it looks like. Oh, I still got to do it there because you got a number, no, you know, just created no one. But anyway, that's what you got with that there. And you go back. And let's see, cancel it out. Then you got the the formula. Now this might be something for like I guess. Um, this looks scientific to me. I mean, look at the little icons on the side. <laughs> I don't know exactly what this is all about. Uh, I didn't really check into it. It says open office math. Uh, me and math were like oil and vinegar. Okay, this this looks like algebra or whatever. But now, uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's we got that with that one there. Let's see what else. Uh, let's if we discard it. Let's see if we open up one more here. Uh, do the experiment. I want to see myself. Uh, let's see what the templates are. Okay, templates presentation. Okay, introduce a new product. Okay, and then all right. So that's what the base of the I guess when you save templates, it'll set it up like that. That's your drawing one. We did the presentation. This is if you're opening files up. 
and uh, uh, introduce them to a new product. Look at that. Okay. I mean, it's re really nice. I think you guys are going to love it. I think you'll like it. Try it out. I mean, look, it's for free. What more could you ask for, right? Now, let me open up this one here. I want to go over a few other things with you really quick. I keep saying really quick, and uh, it doesn't work out that way. So, you know, if you go to eBay, don't buy any of these open office. Go to that window and type in office and uh, open office, and you'll get that software to land right here. Okay? Didn't even have it over here, too. This might be a little different setup here. Let's see. I'm just curious for myself. Oh, it's the same. It brings the same window. Well, that's the one you want. Let me close that out. Uh, you want to take a peek at my eBay thing? It's been dead. Remember, I, remember, I think I, I think I did a video last week or whatever. I had like 176 or something like that. I think the people left. They, they were on another planet here. For either that or I'm on another planet. I'm going to see selling here. Last time was 76. 176. Let's see. boy yep still 176 folks it's been like this here and not I didn't call you up to I didn't call you up I didn't make this YouTube video to uh, complain or say hey look at my sales it's been like I'm just giving you a heads up it's been like this since I think Thursday <laughs> so nothing is moving and you can see I have 176 items here I got watches like they're saying all you know everybody well, everybody's watching but no one's buying but that's understandable. It is the holiday coming up, so you gotta expect that. I mean, I'm hoping after the holiday, all this stuff will go. Okay. You can see I got two here, two there, three, four, two. Yeah, everybody looks, but no one's sticking their hands in their pocket. Come on, people, buy some stuff. Look at this. Two, two, one, two, two, one, 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 one. Everybody's looking, you know, watching, but no one's buying. But you know what? It's all right. They're, they're shopping. You know they're shopping around, and that's hey. I do the same thing. I'm I'm just messing around. I do the same thing. I mean, I'm not selling anything phenomenally great here. That you know people should say, hey, I gotta go to that guy's website. You know the auction site. He sells great stuff. I mean, psh, there's 50 million people who are probably selling the same thing I'm selling anyway. But you know, I'm just sharing this with you. But you can see I got like I said, I got watches, but no takers. If this would sell, that'd be nice. It'd be a nice uh, little chunk of change there. Anyway, let's go back over here and let's close this out. I'm not going to be checking eBay tonight because I usually do as a rule, but you know what? It's been dead like that, and it'll probably be like that tomorrow too. So let me close that out. And let me close this out. And I just wanted to share something with you guys. Um, you know, I'm on Twitter too. I have it. If you go into RJ Piscini of Horizon, not not RJ, you got RJ Piscini, uh, Twitter.com. You'll see it comes up like that there. Uh, this is my Twitter account. Um, you can see the tweets, the following, the followers. I mean, you know, who I'm following. These are the tweets the total. Not all mine, of course. It's probably from the other people. That's how many files I have here: likes, lists, and moments. Uh, the funny thing is with this here, I don't know if it, if Twitter or something. There's a program that, that allows you to upload the stuff because I don't, I'll be honest with you, I was looking through this here and I don't remember putting all of these up here on Twitter. Not that I care, I'm not complaining, but somehow they got superimposed on here and <laughs> they're all the, all the ones I put on YouTube. I mean, maybe that's where I'm getting feedback, like a sneak peek video. I mean, they're all on, they're all on Twitter. I'm not complaining. Hey, if Twitter did this for me, <laughs> thank you. Because it would take me a heck of a long time to put this all on Twitter. I mean, you know, to do one at a time, copy, paste, or whatever. I'm not sure the process on it, but it would probably take me a long time. But I'm looking, it's like, where did these all come from? Now, this is this is like when you go to my, when you, you know, go to rjpc.com, it comes up like that. Now, watch, watch when I click here, home. Okay, let me click home again. Come on, computer. See, now it's a whole different ball game. See, you don't see that stuff. See what I'm saying? You still see the 796, it's 2018, 3290, but you don't see all that other stuff. See, you just get your average stuff. So I don't know how that got on there. I'm not complaining. Um, I'm not going to complain to Twitter or, or YouTube if they put it on there, they, they impose, superimposed it on whatever. I'm not going to complain to anybody. You, you know, that's, that's more advertisement for me. And uh, 
you know, get my word out. So that's good. But you see here, it's the same thing, the same Twitter account, right? Still see the same information on there, right? So you see what it is right there. 796, 2018. I'm not complaining. Whoever put it on there, hey, you did me a favor. The other thing I want to share with you is that um, I'm also on, I started a Facebook thing. If you guys want to join that, it's up to you. It's I'm just starting. There's not much on there going on right now. Um, I started a group. Uh, if I go to the other window here, home. Okay. I I started this group, I think, today. Today's the 10th, I believe. Right. Um, this computer's been really slow today. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so over here, eBay Top Rated Sellers Group. Okay. So I just started it. I mean, you can see it looks like I didn't really do this right here. I got I to gotta work on it. But um, if you want to join, I join quite a bit of, bit of these groups here, to be honest with you. When I see the new ones come on, I do join, so I will join these as well. That's basically it. I don't have too much inf more information to share with you. I just wanted to go over that really quick with you. Uh, if you like this video or you like the channel, you could subscribe to it. If you like the information I provided, you want to give it a thumbs up, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine as well. As I always tell you the same thing. It's not like a broken record. I shouldn't even bother saying that. But I guess what you get it's a bad habit, I guess, when you watch other YouTubers. Oh, if you like my video, give it a thumbs up. There's one guy that says, smash that like button. You know, that, that yeah, smash the like button or whatever if you like the video. <laughs> it's funny, but he's a nice guy, this guy. I follow him on uh, on YouTube. But um that's basically it. I just wanted to share it with you. And remember, folks, if you're gonna, if you don't have a spreadsheet program, you just start now, and you want to save money, you know, as much money as you can with this stuff. Uh, you see my video about the eBay reality check. I, I got quite a few, uh, you know, little responses on it, quite a few views, not much, but I got enough. People are viewing it. And uh, let's see what else. That's basically it. Uh, if you don't have, like I said, if you don't have a spreadsheet, you might want to make one, especially if you're going to stay in this business, or even if you do it a part-time or whatever, it's a part-time venture, you might want to keep a spreadsheet of the merchandise you're, you know, you're buying. Uh, when I buy from a thrift store, they give you a receipt, big receipt, but depending on how many things you got. I have receipts that are like yay long. I mean, no little no exaggeration there. You could pull them out and, you know, you, they're probably as long as my desk. That's how long they are. Well, you're buying little items, but the way they come up, especially on the uh, half days and stuff like that, you know, they got the discounts, they got the total price, and they got the tax and stuff. And the way they have their format, it sets it up. It's really space. So each item is space. So you end up getting a receipt, huge, big receipt. Uh, let's see what else. So what I do is after I get that, I come home. I haven't done it on a computer yet, but I do log in in a book. I have a hardbound book, a notebook. I log it in. I put the date it was purchased, the item description, uh, what I bought it for. If it was bought half, 25% uh, off, 50% off, and what I sold it for, and a profit. But on that spreadsheet, that's going to be a little more diverse. It's going to be a little more um, explorative. Uh, I'm going to put on there trends, how long I bought the thing, you know, how long it's been on eBay, 30 days, 60 days, two months, a year. Some guy was well, listening to one uh, eBay guy, and he said he had it on for almost like a year. Somebody said, I said that's, that's total insanity. I'm not gonna. I, I'm not. If I have merchandise that long, I'll just take it off and donate it to the, my church. I'm not gonna keep an item on that long for a year, six months, three months. You know, when you hear these people say, "Oh my gosh, three months, a year." <laughs> suppose you suppose you're using this as you depend on that extra money, even if you're not doing it as a living. But let's say you say, "Well, you know, I got a, I got a water bill coming in, or I got an electric bill coming in. It's gonna cost me three hundred dollars a month for the electric or whatever." You know, well, wait a minute, you know, let me put you on hold. I got to wait for my eBay stuff to sell. It's only been a year. You know, I mean, it's like, wow. You know, just anyway, that's what I'm saying. With the with the uh, software, just keep track of what you got. But that's what I do. That's why I got that software, um, that, that open office. I love it. The spreadsheet uh, software is good. It's a nice format, clean. You could graph it. You can see high and lows. You could graph it like if you're doing like your sales, you could say, well, the month of December, I spiked up, I spiked down. May, January, it picked up, and so on and so forth. You could do first quarter, third, fourth, you know, and first, second, and third, fourth quarter if you're going to keep it that way and graph it too. You could really make it look professional. It's, you know, like, like one person was saying about eBay, in order to make it work, you got to put a lot of time into it. And it, it's the same thing with that type of software. 
what you put into that software, the, the information and data you're putting in that software is going to make a whole hell of a difference. And not only that, if you are a power seller or, you know, somebody that sells a lot, I'm not talking about a guy like me. Just because I'm top rated doesn't mean, that doesn't mean nothing really to me. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy that I made it to that status, but um, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, <laughs> I'm uh, Mr. Mega, Mr. Mega Man with mega, mega money. Uh, it's good to have it. This way, if you do have to, do, you know, you do your taxes. You do have to do your taxes, of course. You, you know, you want to have a spreadsheet, and you want to have that thing. Learn. You got. I got to learn how, the formulas how to do the calculation part of it. You know, with the deductions and stuff like that. That's gonna be a little tricky, but again, we're all teachable. We should never look at ourselves as, oh, I can't learn that, or you know, I don't have the smarts for it. I'm not a rocket science, okay? I don't. I'm not. Me and Matt, like I said earlier, I, me and Matt like oil and vinegar, okay? I'm not. Math is not my favorite topic, but. We, we all have to use math, okay? No matter what, even if it's your basic math, we still have to use it. But with the formula, you'll learn easy enough. I'm sure you'll learn. You can pick it up. You can probably get tutorials online on how to do it. Um, I'm sure if you go to, uh, what do you call it, uh, YouTube and type in Open Office uh, help with, uh, I don't know, the, the software, you could probably get stuff like that there. You know, how to teach you how to do that stuff. I'm sure they have that. But it's it's not going to be difficult. But you know, that, I just wanted to share that with you because, like I said, I don't know. You know, when I hear people talking like the like when they're talking about eBay and stuff, I don't know if these guys are talking about. You know, oh, you should do this. You keep records. So I know I know a couple of people say keep records, but you know, you want to you want to you want to see what you have. And the reason why I do that with the book, and I you know I want to keep a record on the on the computer as well, is when I get that stuff from the thrift store. They don't, they don't mark down what it is. You know, you're buying a, a Sony cassette player. They don't write Sony cassette player. It's done by a, a, a UPC code. So what I got to do is, and they, they put that PC code, UPC code on, a, on the item. Okay. If it's a stuffed doll, they staple it to the ear. If it's a, a hard item, like a, like a, a stereo cassette player or whatever, it's on a unit. So what I do is when I get that stuff home, I open my hard book, my hardbound book. A ledger, I call it a ledger anyway, and I look in there and I say, okay, I put down the date I bought it, I put the item description, what it is, oh, it's a Sony cassette player, then I got to look at the thing there, the UPC code, and I say, okay, I got to match the UPC code up with the price I paid, if it's a half day, half, I mean half day, half price, I got to take off the half price, I got to take that 50% off, or 25%, so I've marked that in the book too. And then when I get it, it's like a double, see me, it's like what they call that, they call it a double accrual system. What I'm doing is, and I'm giving myself extra work actually, but before I came about with that software, um, before I thought about, oh, making, hey, let me make a spreadsheet, I was doing it in a book. So now it's like, I don't want to have a double accrual system. I don't think it's a bad thing, but I'm giving myself extra work. What I would do is now it'd be different with the spreadsheet. I come in on a computer, put it in there. Oh, cassette player, this way I bought for sold, start date, you know, like when it was on there, it was an auction, it's a fixed. How long was it on? 30 days, 40, uh, 60 days, 90 days, or whatever. And then you could you could dra you graph it like that per month. You say, well, in the month of August, I bought this item, uh, let's say August 1st. It didn't sell to the 29th or to the third or to the, the 14th or the 20th or whatever. Or maybe I might have sold that same day. You know, you want to keep track of this stuff and you can graph it. You know, you graph it for the month. Uh, your basic accounting and, and it'll give you, you know what? By doing that, it acts as a sales forecast for you too. You'll, you'll know your high peaks and low peaks, you know, um, good seasons, bad seasons, you know, like, all right, this is December, of course, all right, we got another couple, we, whatever, another, what, 10, 15 more days before Christmas comes. So, you know, I don't expect people to buy. I mean, I, I'm just saying for these past couple, I didn't know, wait, what's it, Thursday? It might even be Wednesday. I don't think I even got a sale on Wednesday. So I think it's been Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and today's Saturday, yeah. I haven't, that's been at 176 for quite some time. Uh, like I said, people looking, no one's sticking their hands in their pocket to buy. And I understand the holiday. I mean, who's going to, who's going to buy stuff off of eBay and then go out and buy their loved one's gifts? You know, I understand that. I, I don't, I don't expect people to, you know, stop and buy. I'm not, I'm not complaining either. I'm not buying anything. I, well, I, like I said, I think I mentioned once before, the only things I bought, I buy on eBay is ink cartridges for my HP 6500 printer. And the uh, brother printer, I bought a toner cartridge. That's it. And the only thing I did make a purchase recently, well, a while back, 
was I bought a barcode scanner. I bought that when I do my VHSs and DVDs. I bought that because it does help out. It helps minimize the work because you get that there, you take it, boom, you scan it, comes up, and then you can see everything there. And you can do you, you, if, it, it helps out. It's, it's especially if you're selling DVDs and stuff. But you know, going forward, I just want to say one little thing. Um, I'm gonna probably not be selling the stuff like what you see now. I'm not gonna probably be selling too much of uh, stuff, dolls, uh, electronics. I'm, I'm, I'm wishy wash better. I don't know. I'm thinking more going towards the clothing. I'm thinking more of going that way because I, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm definitely gonna do it, but I'm thinking of pointing that direction. And the reason why I'm saying it because. I, de I guess I guess what's getting to me is making those custom boxes for everything. I mean, literally, I make custom boxes for everything I sell. Everything that you see on there, what outside the v uh, DVDs and VHSs and stuff, I make custom boxes for it. And I don't mind. It's just that it's a whole lot of work to do that. It really is. I mean, it's a lot of work. People don't realize. I mean. You know, you're taking rulers and you're measuring, and I always try to use the uh, three inch, two or two and eight, well, two inch to three inch format on what, whatever you get. Like, let's say this thing I was going to sell this here, right? I'm not going to put it in a pad anymore because it might get squished, right? So what I would do is, if I'm making a box for this, I measure it out. Well, I say, oh, say inches, six inches, whatever. I put it on there, and I usually have like a two inch. Well, this here would not be too much, but my thing is, I usually like to make a two inch. Uh, buffer zone around it so to speak and with the two inches when I'm talking about two inches this is what I'm talking about so two inches here two inches there this might not be that much though this is like but if I was going to do something like that that's the rule of thumb I do I use uh, usually a two inch space around it so when you're putting it in the box all around it's got two inches so if this thing does get jostled it's not going to hit if it goes past two inches of packing that's that's pretty bad you know the thing was really jostled bad um, I got a printer that's going to be sold. Well, I hope it'll be sold. We have four people watching it. It's about yay big. And it's kind of heavy. Now, that there is going to be a custom-made box. I might have one that size. I don't know how to look in my storage area. But if not, I'm going to have to make a custom box to fit that there. And, I, and you know what? I mean, I have the biggest box I have right now would be for that. I know, I know for a fact it will be definitely be cut down. It's the 18 by 18 by 24. Now that printer is sleek. It's about this big, like that. So I can tell you right now, all right, the printer's probably about that big, like that. It's a very small printer. I think it's only 15 inch. I think I did in one of the videos how, how much it was, how long it was, the width. It wasn't big. The HP I got, it's almost 20 inches long. It's almost 19, almost 19 and a half, whatever. That's that's big, but they even come, yeah, they even have the 8500s, so even bigger than that. Um, so that that's going to be cut down. That box is going to be cut down. I'm going to you know shrink it down, but I'm going to leave a buffer around it. So you got to allow for, for if somebody drops it, and that's going to have to be packed tight. But it's going to have to have a lot of padding around it and stuff. So that is it's because it's fragile, and uh, you know you don't know how people handle these things. Uh, you know, I put labels on them, fragile, handle with care. Please do not drop or crush. Please do not bend or fold or whatever. I put stickers on things like that, especially the uh, DVDs. Now, you know it's it's hard, but still, you never know, you know. Uh, the reason why I put do not crush on because let's say it's a, let's say it's going via by the postal service, you know, they might be putting stuff out, they might lean on top of it, crush it up and make it even worse than what it is, you know, or whatever. If it, was, if it was a VHS that had a crack in it or crushed, was a little crinkled, now you're putting something else on that's going to be more crinkled because, you know, those plastic things, you know. But, um... Yeah, I'm thinking like when as time goes on, I'm thinking of kind of like, you know, it all depends. I might not, I might sell electronics, but probably not as much because I'm looking at the way the way they sit, and I have stuff on it. Be honest with you, for a couple of months now, uh, I have stuff that takes back to some some cases even August, you know, and um, it's you know. Yeah, yeah, I think like, you know, September, October, yeah, like, you know, August, September, yeah, I got stuff that's been sitting there, when I think about it, that's that's still being listed, and uh, that's not really good, when you have, when you have merchandise like that laying around that long, that's not really a good thing to buy, you don't want to get involved in that, uh, I'm not saying if I jump on a clothing bag, a you know, clothing bandwagon, that's going to help me out, but uh, what I like about clothing, if I do get more into that, 
Uh, at least you can fold it up in a bag, boom, and you can store it and whatever. You know, when, when it comes to stuff like that, you could probably buy a whole ton load of shirts, pants, or whatever. And if, you know, you could probably. I remember in the video I talked about eBay reality, uh, my eBay reality check video. I was talking about storage, and um, you know where these people store stuff. You know, if you buy. 200 shirts 300 pants i mean what are you gonna have i mean you know what i'm saying i mean that thing you could probably store in a 10 by 10 outdoor shed or outdoor building whatever you know something that small you don't need a warehouse you know something like that you could store and you could get the bags i mean those you can't cut down because those have to you know you can't cut you can't get a bag like this and cut it then you can't make a, a shirt go in a little box like a little bag like that but but it, it'd probably be a lot cheaper more economical too because then you could give fixed shipping prices uh flat flat rate flat shipping flat rate shipping all whatever and uh, you can have a set price on your shipping so if you're getting a shirt and uh, whatever you, you you're eating your sauce you know you get a sort you go to a, a retail no, retail a thrift store and you pick a shirt up for whatever you know you can get something like that there put it in a padded envelope shoot it out for a, fl a flat rate price because a shirt I think is not even I don't know it depends if they're light material it could only be I seen I had stuff that was like not even 10 ounces you know, pants a little more. When you get dungarees, you know, jeans, whatever. If they're big jeans, the more material, the more weight. And I'm not saying it's be funny, but you know, it's gonna. I had pants, pants that were, because uh, it was heavy material, mind you. They almost they were about a pound. You know, so I mean, it depends. The you know, it depends the type of material you're using. You know, if you're selling dress pants, they may be very light. You sell jeans, and if they're wide, you know, if you're big, big you know, large pants, whatever. Yeah, the more it's going to cost you. But uh, I, I think I'm going to trend a little more towards that. But again, I got to do my research on it. I'm not going to just go into a store and just start buying like a crazy man. I'm going to buy 200 pairs of shirts, 200 pairs of pants. I'm going to do my research because, like I said, when it comes to things of that nature, you want to make sure you're buying the right things or else. Then with that, I'll be stuck with that there for months if it doesn't sell. So, you know, I gotta, I'm got i going to see which way I'm going to go, but I, I, I'm getting a little, I don't mind doing custom boxes. <laughs> but like I said, you know, sometimes it gets a little tiresome, you know, you're sitting there cutting and then, because then you got to tape them up and, you know, they're not fixed boxes. Like, you know, when you get them from us, when you get them already made, they got, the, you know, they're glued inside, you know what I'm saying? You got they're already glued inside. I mean, I have, I was doing at one point buying the glue sticks and when I separate the boxes to make them smaller, I would make a fold and I would glue them in there and then put tape in there to make it, you know, really tight. But that's that's a lot of work. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. I, I don't know yet. I can't say for sure. I mean, I'm telling you this stuff now, but who knows? Maybe I might go in a thrift store and see something really nice and say, yeah, I got to buy it. I didn't think I was going to sell printers. Matter of fact, I sold an HP printer a while back. I was looking on a uh, feedback thing there. And uh, I sold an HP. Matter of fact, that HP, when I bought it, I brought it home that morning, I cleaned it up, took the pictures, did the video on it, and I think it was like late, late, well, late in the evening or whatever, the thing sold that same day. Sometimes I get things like that that sell the same day. I, I have a pair of skates, ice skates, I clean them up and put them on eBay. They sold that same day, and there was something else that sold too, uh, a coffee pot, a Farberware electric coffee pot. I put that on, I didn't have it on long, I think it sold, that sold the next day, I believe. I'm quite sure it was the next day. But I had I had sales where the merchandise I brought home, it was it was good merchandise and stuff like that. I brought it home and the thing sold. I mean within that within that same day. You very rarely that's lucky. That's those are lucky shots. I mean I wish I mean I have 176 items there. If all those items could sell, it would bring a, a decent pay. It would bring a decent uh paycheck for the month, you know what I'm saying, for the whole month. But you know, reality is that's not gonna that's not gonna happen. If you could sell, well, I, not for me. Like I said, I I mean, I've heard stories where people say, "Oh, I sold a hundred today. I, I did this fifty, whatever 30. I wish I could. Have, I wish I can get to that. That'd be great. I wish I could sell that many in a day. I wish I could sell one hundred seventy six. Be busy as hell, but I wouldn't mind doing it because I know the I know the payback is going to be good. You know, to some point. But uh, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, folks, I just wanted to share those little tidbits with you. Uh, if you think it's helpful, you know, if you like my channel, you like what I do, you can subscribe if you like. Um, if you like the, the information I provided for you, uh, if you want to give it a thumbs up, that's fine too. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, I do this I do this because I want to help you guys out or try to share 
what little information I have uh, that may be helpful to you. And if I come across any other little things that to help you save money, uh, I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Um, I had one person that made a comment, and I think it was on eBay selling tips, and uh, the person said something like, uh, where's the selling tips? I don't say anything about selling. You don't, you're not saying anything about saving tips or something, saving, uh, selling saving tips. And I commented back and I said, I'm sorry about that, uh, that you don't find it helpful. I said, uh, I, I do, like I said, I do, uh, you know, help people save money on the, the, the shipping stuff. Like, you know, I make custom boxes and I talked, I, I wrote in there, but I, t I tell the person, like, I take the padded envelopes, so you cut them and you could save money like that. I guess the person didn't want that, you know, didn't really understand that or maybe they didn't go for it. But, um, I do try to do things that will help help you as a as a seller save money on shipping. Uh, I, I just want to touch one base with you. In regards, if you're a person that sells keyboards, keyboard you know computer keyboards, those boxes from the postal service that you get, it's about yay big, like that. I think I made a custom box on there. Um, how to do custom boxes with that. You might want to think twice about using them, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Look, I love the Postal Service. My father, God rest his soul, worked for U.S. Postal Service for almost 40 years. Um, I love the Postal Service. I give all my business right now to them, to the Postal Service. Very rarely, I have a, I have a FedEx account. I very rarely use a FedEx, though. Uh, usually that's for big monster things. If I'm selling something really big, I'll take it. because The reason why I do that, because I don't have to wait online. I go to the drop window, bing, they take care of it. Um, with those boxes, I think you guys might know if you don't, they're box about yay big, about thin like that. There, I, I did it. I did a video on them, on uh, create, you know, custom making custom boxes. That's what I was using. If you look at, that's what I was using how to make it. Just listen to what I'm saying, and it may be of help to you if you're selling keyboards. Those boxes, they're flat rate prices. And like I said, I love the Postal Service. I stand by them. I, to me, I like them right now. I think they're the best for me. They work for me. To send stuff out, if I read the prices right on that particular size box, it was 18, I think, 18.75 and change. And I got some other news for you, a little tidbit news, what's going on. In January, the Postal Service rates are going up. Uh, how I noticed, because I got, I deal with, I have a, uh, a Dymo, label writer 450 twin turbo printer and what i use to print out postage is the um indicia indicia sent me an email saying that at such and such a date in the 2017 the postage rates are going to change so you're going to see a cost and postage rates going up so this is probably a good heads up for you guys right now if you the ones that sell keyboards i'm not saying you get if you do it a lot then go for it but if you want to save your buyer money and you want to track business, you might want to try either go into a, a, a box company that makes them. If you if you sell strictly keyboards or you sell a lot of them, you could probably go to a box company or call them up. I think Uline is one of the big companies that do boxes. I don't know if they make custom boxes like that. You could probably have your own. You give them dimensions. I'm sure they can make it for you. I don't know. I can't swear to. I'm sure they make they they have custom boxes because they make all different sizes. So you might want to check with that or watch my video on making custom boxes and I think you'll know what I'm talking about. That box, that size box to ship it out is 18, I think 18 and change. Don't quote me on it, but I think it's in that price range. Now, if you are going to sell keyboards for 15, 20 bucks and you're going to tag that price on there, $18 change for shipping and handling. I could tell you right to boot. Me personally, if I came across your your auction site and I seen that, and I know the price of that thing there, I know you're using priority mailbox. I think it's a priority mailbox, and you're gonna charge me that. I'm skipping right over you and going to somebody else that either offers free shipping, but I'm gonna also look at the price too, because you know the person's offer free shipping. Like let's say you're charging eighteen dollars plus twenty dollars for the keyboard. They might be, you know, doing a reverse. They might have a, 
a cheaper keyboard, whatever, a cheaper keyboard, and the, you know, the shipping might be the same, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So they might be charging you less on a keyboard, but the shipping's gonna be the same like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not going that route. So I would skip over, I would skip over a person like that because I'm not gonna pay $18. And the reason why I make custom boxes for keyboards is because I could charge the buyer. Now they're paying for this now, they're gonna pay for the shipping, but I'm not gonna try to give free shipping with that. In some cases I do, in some cases I don't. I did it on one of the uh, one of the keyboards I sold. It was not on it was not off of eBay. It was off of Bonanza. I took a wash on it. Okay, I took a wash on it. I went down. <laughs> you can say go down the toilet with that one. I did. I, I got the keyboard cheap enough. I put down a certain a price, free shipping, and I didn't even break out even. So for now on, keyboards are going. You're going to pay for the keyboard shipping. Okay. That's you're gonna pay for the shipping on them. Sorry, I, I can't, do, I can't do the free thing. I can't. And, uh, but, but here's the thing I'm saying though. If you do it my way, to ship a keyboard out versus eighteen dollars and change, you could do it my way. Either you go to a box company, have a made up investment. Money. This if you sell a lot of keyboards. If you don't sell a lot of keyboards, then you just do it like I did, make a keyboard box. You know, make one out of a, you know, out of a custom box. Then you could charge that price to ship out. That keyboard, one I sent out, I did it like that. They paid, I think it was like 6 or $7, something like that. So it's a savings. And you you will, you know, most likely you're going to get a buyer that's going to go for that there. So all I'm saying is that people say, oh, well, I'm not going to go doing what this guy does. You think I'm going to sit there cutting boxes and measuring and stuff. I don't have the time for that. You could do what you want. You guys want to sit there and just get those priority mailboxes and, you know, use those and ship them out and, Tag that price onto the buyer. Go right ahead. Not me. I'm trying to save the buyer money. Uh, you know, and at the same time, I'm trying to make a, I'm, I'm trying to make a, a living too off of this stuff. You know, make some money too. So uh, I'm not going to see. I I do things. I'm doing what I'm doing is to try to save the buyer money. Okay, on shipping, because I know shipping shipping can be very expensive. Uh, I was looking for a, a heat press, and the guy had <laughs> listen to this. He had a heat press for one penny. Someone put a bid on it. So I said, no, this can't, this ain't gonna sell. The, the presses, they go for quite a, you know, they're, they're up there. They go for a nice, decent buck, a decent, not thousands, not, well, at least the ones I was looking at were. And I said, for a penny, right? I looked at the shipping, $147 for the shipping. So he's charging that person a penny, but he's banging them with the uh, $147 in shipping. So, you know, <laughs> I don't play that way. If I if I come across something like like that printer, yeah, you know, you, you want to buy something, you want to make you want to make a profit off it and stuff like that cuz so we're, we're resellers. That's what we are. We're resellers. We 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 re go to thrift stores, garage yard sales, we buy stuff for nickels on the on the dollar whatever it is, it dimes, $15, whatever it is, a couple bucks. And we resell it. We make a profit off it. That's how we. Some people sustain a lifestyle with a living, and some people use that money for other things. But when you're going to buy something like that, you know, and and try to, and, you know, basically you're going to tag it onto the buyer. You know, I'm looking out for the buyer. People may say, well, maybe you're you're looking out for yourself. That's what. No, I'm looking out for the buyer. Because, and I'll tell you why I'm looking out for the buyer. Because for me to go to that extreme. To sit there and make a custom box to sell that item, you might say, "Yeah, well, you're doing it to sell an item." True, that's true. But I could sell that item. I could get that keyboard, tag my my profit on it, you know, my price on it, and I could hit. And if I if I if I really didn't want to take the initiative to do that, there to think about the buyer saving the money, I could just put it in a, in a priority box and say it's going to cost you eighteen dollars and change on top of it. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're all people go on eBay. They shop on eBay to save money. That's why. We, that's why we go there. When we we need something, you know, when I needed car parts for my old car, I didn't go to the deal. I went to eBay for it. I got great deals on the stuff. I saved tons and tons of money on on uh, parts for my car. Okay, engine parts, body parts, whatever. I you know, like when I needed certain things for the car, the bumper, whatever it was, I needed you know emblems for my car. I could I go to eBay, pick the stuff up, you know, get it next to nothing it's cheap you go to a dealer forget it they, they, they call, charge you an arm and a leg so what i'm trying to say is you know that's why i do it 
but you know if you guys it's only one example but uh, you know I'm just trying to give you a heads up you know you might want to you know think about your buyer too you know I mean look if we could help each other save money help each other save money on things why not and we're making it we're making money on it right we're making money off the things we pick up you know why not why not be, do the right thing and help the buyer out that's how I look at it so for me um, I will if I do sell keyboards I will continue to keep making those custom boxes because I do not want to charge the buyer uh, $18 to send out. People say, well, you don't have to use priority. You could use uh, USP select, whatever, UPS select, whatever. I don't know. I, for me, I like, I don't mind doing it. Okay. I, I like doing it. And, uh, you know, not many people are going to do that. There's not many people going to sit there doing what I do as far as making custom boxes. I mean, I make custom boxes of everything. Uh, if I was selling this, this tape dispenser, I'm not going to put a big box in there. I'm going to cut it down to size and make a box. I'm going to make a box that's going to fit this. Okay. Well, of course, allow space for padding, you know, so it gets, doesn't get broken or whatever. I'm going to make a box for this stuff. That's what I do. I make boxes. You know, if I sell a headlamp, like this table lamp here, or whatever it may be, uh, if I'm selling a little phone, I'm going to make a custom box for it. They don't make, they don't make boxes for every little thing. That's why sometimes you get stuff in the mail. I ordered something one time. I forget what it was. I don't know. If, oh no, I think it was a company when they sent me a modem. Uh, Verizon. They sent me a modem. The the modem was this big, and the box was huge, and had all this padding around it, for a little thing like this, a little thing. They put a big box. The box was huge. I was like, what is this thing? I'm shaking. I was like, and it was light. You know, it's because that, that Verizon thing back then was a small little modem. And I'm, sh I'm shaking it there. I said, is there anything in here? Well, that's how light it was. They they just took a fix. I know, look, Verizon's not going to worry about it. No one's going to sit there custom making a box. But they could have bought smaller boxes to put that stuff in it to send it out to customers. But, you know, they're a multi-billion dollar business. So they probably write that off anyway at the end of the year. I, can, I, have not, I can't write. I can't afford to do stuff like that. I'm sorry. But anyway, folks, that's all I want to talk to you about. I'm sorry I went rambling on with certain things. Um... I just wanted to share that stuff with you. I thought it may be helpful. If you like it, fine. If not, that's fine too. Um, it's getting a little late here, so I'm going to call it a night. Thanks again for stopping by. And uh, again, if you find this information helpful, uh, you could, you know, subscribe, uh, give it a thumbs up. And uh, I just want to say thanks again. Have a great night. Take care, guys. Talk to you soon.